What's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna teach you the basics of how to connect your domain to your hosting service. It's very important when watching the rest of this video that you know the difference between a registrar and a web host. If you don't know the difference between the two, please refer to my video on that topic. That video is linked in the description of this video. In order for this video to make sense, you'll also need to have your domain purchased and your hosting in place, preferably with your website at least somewhat already built. This video is also helpful if your hosting service doesn't have an automated tool to connect your website to your domain automatically, or if you just wanna troubleshoot issues with that automated process. So as you can see here, today I'm using GoDaddy as my registrar, and I've gone over to the DNS section of my domain, herschel.net. Now here you'll see that there is some DNS records already here. We're gonna delete some of these, modify some of these, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Now for my host in this example, I'm using Amazon Web Services, Amazon LightSale. Now in a previous video, I did show you very quickly how to set up a WordPress website using Amazon LightSale. It's a very quick and easy process and produces a normal WordPress self-hosted website that has full capabilities. Now from this, I am going to be using this public IP. Everything else doesn't really matter here. And here is the website that I'm talking about that I set up through Amazon LightSale. And then just to give you another example of a web host, I have WP Engine here where I've got my staging site for my notherschel.com WordPress website that's available to the public and you can go there if you want. But this staging site is basically where I stage changes, future changes to my website. But as you can see, there's already a subdomain that exists right here. Now the reason I'm showing you this is mainly to show you a couple of different examples of how to connect your host to your registrar or your domain, in other words. Now just to recap, just so you know, in LightSail, I'm given an IP address and in WP Engine, we're given a host name or a domain as you can see. So now to get started, as you can see, there are three records here that I can delete or I can edit and there are three that I can't. So we're just gonna focus on these three here and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove these values here. Just hit delete there. Do the same here. And do the same with this last one. Now we're ready to add the new host records. So I'm gonna click this add button here. Now the first thing it's gonna ask me is the type of record that I'm going to be inputting right now. Now in order to select a type or in order to know the type of record that I'm gonna be creating, you need to know what your host service is giving you. Now, like I said before, in LightSail, they're giving you an IP address, and in WP Engine, they're giving you a domain or a host. So anytime a hosting service provides you with a IP address, you'll be inputting an A record. And anytime your hosting service gives you a host name, you'll be using a C name. Now, in some cases, your host may actually give you both an IP address and a host name or a domain. And in that case, you'll just choose a C name. That's usually the recommended method and it's the one that responds the fastest. So as I mentioned before, LightSail uses an IP address. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that IP address and we're gonna copy it. And then we're gonna jump back here and because it's an IP address that it's giving us, we're gonna go to an A record, as I mentioned before. So the host, that I'm gonna put here, because I'm gonna put my regular domain with no subdomains or anything like that, I'm gonna put an at sign, and then I'm gonna have it point to that IP address. And what that's telling GoDaddy, or my registrar in this case, is that herschel.net should point to this IP address where my website exists. As you can see, the IP address is right there. And I'm gonna hit save. The next thing I wanna do is make sure that anytime anyone enters www.herschel.net, that it also works. So I'm gonna put another A record in, and I'm gonna type in www as the host, and I'm gonna have it point to the same IP address once again, and hit save. So now we have that, and then we just have to wait for those changes to occur. Now while we're waiting for that, let me just show you how a C name is handled. And very similarly, you'll add a record, and then you'll just select the type C name. The host in this case would be at, and then the points to would be the subdomain that your host gives you. 
and then you would just point that to that subdomain and then hit save. Now, I'm not gonna hit save because obviously I've already got my records up here and this is an entirely different website, so I'm not gonna point it there. And I'm gonna hit cancel. But then you wanna do it again, if you have saved it and that's all you have, is you type in www and then put your host name in as well, once again. And then you would hit save. And in my case, once again, we're not gonna do that. The other thing you wanna make sure is with your host that you have your domain already set up. So in this case, because it's a staging site, WP Engine isn't letting me add a domain, but in this case, what I would do is just add a domain here so that that domain then appears. So in this case, I would take herschel.net and I would jump over here and I would add it as a domain on this hosting service. And what that's telling the hosting service is that whenever there's traffic that's pointed to herschel.net and it hits the hosting service to accept it and to direct it to the appropriate place. If you don't do that, then the hosting service will receive that request and it won't know what to do or where to send that. So it kind of has to exist on both ends. Your domain has to be entered on your hosting service and your hosting service details has to be entered with your registrar service as you can see here or wherever your domain is registered. So finally, like I mentioned before, we just wait. Sometimes these changes take a little time to take effect. So guys, I've jumped ahead and I waited just a few minutes and as you can see, the changes already occurred. So I went to herschel.net and it actually resolves to my website. And then if I go to www.herschel.net, it also goes to the same website. So both the www and the website without it actually work. So guys, that's basically it. And as always, if you have any questions or comments about your host or your registrar specifically, please don't hesitate to comment in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please let YouTube know by hitting the like button. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for future notifications of videos and live streams. Thanks for watching, guys.